Now I am happy to introduce our main presenter, Monty Parikh, who is the student director on the CPHA Board of Directors. She is a first year medical student at McMaster University and has a Bachelor of Health Sciences from McMaster University. She founded McMaster's Public Health Association and has a very keen focus in engaging students and early career professionals in public health. She's spearheading the Technology and Public Health Working Group, which you'll hear more about later in this webinar. As she was a panelist on the World Leadership Dialogue at the World Congress on Public Health last year, which focused on highlighting her work with engaging students and early career professionals in Canada. And she was selected to attend the Women Leaders in Global Health Conference at Stanford University. She's presented her research at the World Congress on Public Health, Public Health 2017, and the American Public Health Association Annual Conference in 2017. Her interests include technology in public health, student engagement in public health, improving access to health care and health systems and policy evaluation. In her free time, Monsi enjoys hiking and exploring new bike trails. So I'll pass it over to you now, Monsi. And you will be hearing from a few other student volunteers throughout the webinar as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emma. Um, actually never had an idea that my entire bio would be read out, so um, that was kind of new and interesting. Uh, so thank you so much once again for having me on the webinar. And uh, I definitely would like to keep my presentation short rather than longer so we have more time um, to answer questions. So I'm just going to go over a couple of opportunities for uh, students and how you guys can get involved. And if you guys have any questions, we do have a Q&A period later, so please do ask them. And we will also be hearing from a lot of students that are part of these various opportunities, so you're able to get a better idea of what the role's actually like. So um, going into a couple of different ways for students to get involved. Um, the first one is, um, I mean, that with this presentation specifically, we wanted to just talk about what public health is. Public health in and of itself is extremely broad. And the reason that we wanted to talk about the definition really is to show you that there's a variety of different ways for you to not only get involved with CPHA, but with public health in general. So it doesn't necessarily matter uh, what type of student you are, and we will have a, a poll later on to see where everyone's for, uh, from, um, and to also uh, have an idea of uh, your current involvement with CPHA. But the idea is that no matter um, if you're an undergraduate student or a master's of public health student or a medical student or an early career professional in any one of these sectors, you will have a role to play within public health and hopefully CPHA is also able to uh, find a specific role for you. Uh, and, that, and, and that's something that we like to uh, keep in mind. Um, then kind of moving along, CPHA has focused on a lot of different public health issues in Canada, everything from the opioid crisis um, to different infectious disease outbreaks, um, maternal and infant health. And um, we also have a lot of position statements and policy papers on our website, and I do encourage you all to have a look at them. Um, they're extremely well done, and oftentimes they're actually done by our practicum students, something which we will talk about a, later, um, a bit later in the presentation. So definitely a great opportunity for you all to get involved, and also um, it pr provides you with a very good overview of particular issues um, in Canada. And I guess this is where the image didn't load onto the presentation, but that's not a problem. So um, a little bit about CPHA, as Emma spoke about earlier, were founded in 1910. We are a member-based charitable organization, and we are the national and independent voice for public health in Canada. Um, and essentially, because of our position, we are uh, very well placed in order to advise decision makers. Um, and CPHA, by it, in and of itself, is based off of in Ottawa, um, so very, very close to Parliament Hill. And essentially, uh, through our work, not only just with the student section, but also with CPHA, we're also connected to the International Public Health Committee. And one of those uh, roles is uh, having me sit on the World Federation of Public Health Associations, specifically their student group. 
and our vision and mission. You can also find this on our website, but it is essentially just to enhance the health of people in Canada and to contribute to a healthier and more equ equitable world. And like I mentioned earlier, we do have a lot of policy and position statements. I do encourage you to go on our website and have a look. Um, a lot of that work is generated by our practicum students, and it's very, very great. It's a very great overview of um, the issue and also where our position is. And in terms of our advocacy activities, um, we, as you can see on our website and, and on the slide, we are involved in a m multiple different, I would say, sectors and facets within public health. So if that's something that you're interested in as a student, we do also advocate. We don't only just have our policy and um, position statements. So that's something that we can also talk about later on in the uh, question and answer period. And in terms of our knowledge exchange, uh, we do have a lot of different, or we only ho we host Public Health 2019, which is our main conference, and also help out with the Canadian Immunization Conference. However, um, being a part of CPHA, as you heard earlier in my bio, has given me the opportunity to represent CPHA and uh, our work at a multitude of different conferences. So CPHA is definitely a great way for you to hear about these different conferences, and we send them out to students as we hear about them. Um, another great program that we have is our mentorship program, and I'm, I'm hoping that all of you did get an email about it, where we do match um, students with a mentor within the field. We try our best to ensure that the match is successful in terms of geographical location as well as interest, and it has been a great success. Um, I do believe that we did have a 100% match rate this year, and um, we also did get more mentors this year, which was great. Um, we do put out educational materials as well, and some of the special projects that we're um, working on, at least currently, is the Disruptive Technology Project, and we will um, discuss that further in the latter part of the presentation. And as a student member, you also get access to the Canadian Journal of Public Health and that is something, um, again, that is of value to you, um, to your learning and your growth within the field. So the journal in and of itself, it is published bi-monthly, and it's peer-reviewed, and um, the editorial board is comprised of public health experts from all, all across Canada. I've had an opportunity to speak with some of them. They're extremely lovely individuals, very knowledgeable. And um, like I said, if you're a member, you do get uh, a subscription to this and um, definitely a very, very great resource. And this is our, oh, the annual conference. There's meant to be a picture here. But essentially, uh, next year, it will be held in Ottawa. And it's something that I encourage all of you to go to. Um, essentially, uh, at the conference, um, it, it is something that we host annually, and it definitely plays a critical role in shaping public health research practice and policy environments, and it is a national forum for not only students, but also um, everyone else involved in public health, and we discuss what works and what doesn't work within public health. So now, um, just giving you a little bit of overview about the organization, we'll move on to our students and early career professionals, and I'm sure you're all very, very interested to hear about how you can get involved. So some of um, the things that we found so through just not only just my research, but just a trend that we've noticed is that students do need a lot of guidance and development, especially in a field that is so broad and wide, such as public health. So essentially, um, we recognize that students need a lot of career development. They need mentorship and networking, and they also need funding, um, because getting to conferences and learning about all of the great things going on in public health can get very expensive, and that's exactly where CPHA wants to be able to help students. And we do have um, different, I guess, subsets of activities that can fall under each one of these categories. However, it's um, nice to have a bigger and broader idea of what students need. Again, this, this list is not extremely exhaustive, and if there are specific needs that you have as a student that you feel CPHA could be doing something more, um, please do not feel free or, or please do not hesitate and feel free to email me and let me know about what it might be um, where we can help you. So some opportunities, and you can find these on our website as well. The first one is my position, um, which is to be the student director on the CPHA board. Uh, this position uh, was founded 
uh, a while back, and I believe we're, we were the first organization ever to have such, an, uh, such a position. And I definitely think that um, it is a great way for you to get involved. I'll speak to it in just one second, but some of the other options um, of involvement also include our Student and Early Career Professional Committee, our editorial group, um, being a representative on the conference committee, and we do have speakers from both the editorial group as well as the representative on the conference committee, as well as our working group, specifically the Technology and Public Health Working Group. So going back to the student director position, um, essentially, we are one of the only, um, I, I believe the position was started in 2006, and we are one of the only organizations currently in Canada that do have a position like this. Um, and that's what my presentation last year um, in uh, Melbourne was at the World Congress about encouraging more organizations to have the, such a unique opportunity for students. Essentially, this position allowed me to learn a lot about governance um, within a large nonprofit organization such as CPHA, and it's allowed me to interact with leaders in the field who sit on the board and learn from them, and also to bring your voices to the table. Um, my uh, my, I guess, experience with the position has been fantastic, and I will uh, be completing my last term at the end of 2019, so I do encourage you to apply if this is something that interests you. I was able to not only represent students on the board, but I was also able to represent CPHA and students across the world, and I think that that's something um, that is not only great for uh, my growth as some as a learner in public health, but it was also great for CPHA to learn from other organizations and from and mainly for organ other organizations to learn from us. And uh, the commitment for the student director, time commitment wise, the commitment is uh, a little top heavy, I would say, and then it changes based on the projects that you choose to lead. Um, I certainly uh, <laughs> tried my best to get involved wherever I could and whatever I could to help, I tried to do it. So I would say that it does take a fair bit of time. However, every minute of it has been enjoyable, and I really do love student engagement, and I'm extremely passionate about it. And I think that wherever students can get involved, they should. And if that position doesn't exist, I've always been open to creating positions um, for uh, those particular uh, roles. So that's definitely something that I do encourage all of you to think about. And if you have any specific questions about it, please do not hesitate to ask me. Then moving on to the Student and Early Career Professional Committee. So this was something that I created uh, about two years ago. And the reason for the creation of this committee is I'm still a student. Um, so I, A, would not really know the problems affecting early career members, so essentially um, the early career leadership position was created because of that. And I also thought about how in order to be the student director, you really do need to know a little bit more about the organization and have a greater leadership role. Hence, we also created a position for communications and then the student ambassador program. This not only helps um, the student director better understand the needs of students, but at the same time, it provides you guys with a lot of leadership opportunities that are kind of stepping stones to becoming um, the student director in the future. And it is a, a group that is Canadian, and we do meet a few times a year via teleconference, so it doesn't really matter where you're located as long as you're willing to help. Um, we can definitely um, have you on. And the other part of the Student and Early Career Committee are our subcommittees. So the two that we have currently are the Public Health Day Toolkit and then the CPHA Student Member Video. If you are interested in these, there will be a sign-up sheet at the end of the presentation, but essentially each subcommittee has uh, specific roles. The Public Health Day Toolkit Committee is to uh, create essentially a toolkit, which would be a gathering of different activities and events that public health organizations at different universities can host, and that would foster more mentorship and networking for students. And on the other hand, the CPHJ student member video is just something we thought would be a nice um, segue, I guess, in order to uh, get people more interested in CPHA, and also it's like a multimedia tool that can be used in order to just gather more student engagement 
Um, and that was something that we are currently working on. However, I believe we will be filming it at Public Health 2019 next year. So if any of those um, interest you and or you have amazing video editing skills, please do let us know. We are still looking for volunteers. Uh, so now um, I will let Venusha talk a little bit about the student editorial group, um, if that is something that you can do. Yeah. Thanks, Perfect. Monty. <laughs> Um, hi, everyone. My name is uh, Venusha Ganesiman. I am one of the editors-in-chief for the CPHA Student Editorial Group. Uh, so essentially, uh, students in the editorial group edit pieces submitted to the student blog, um, which you may have seen. Um, and it's uh, the blog is basically pieces by students and early uh, career professionals like you guys. And um, if you'd like to submit a piece to us, uh, we're looking for pieces on current issues in public health, research, uh, student experiences, so any internships or practicum placements or conferences and workshops that you've uh, attended and would like to speak about, um, transition experiences, so if you'd like to talk about your experiences from high school to undergrad or undergrad to grad school or from uh, school to career, um, experiences, uh, that's totally welcome. And we also would like to hear about uh, career, like advice on, um, I guess, careers uh, that you are in if you are an early career professional. Um, and you could see the link on the slide uh, for instructions on how to submit to us. If you'd like to be a part of our team, uh, we are, uh, ex we are uh, accepting applications in September uh, for next year. Um, the positions available will be editor-in-chief, uh, and essentially this position is what I'm doing right now with Elaine Chan, and we uh, liaise with CPHA staff such as Emma uh, for the promotion and the blog and the publications of pieces. and. We coordinate, edit, um, we coordinate with the rest of the editorial team to uh, make a final decision on the pieces that we've received. The senior editor um, is someone that we're looking for with uh, previous editorial experience, um, and this person would review and edit submissions, uh, as well as make suggestions for the decision to accept or reject um, any pieces that we see. Um, and we're also looking for a junior editor uh, who may or may not have prior editorial experience. Um, and this person would be also editing <laughs> uh, submissions along with the senior editorial group and would also make suggestions for the decision to accept or reject submissions. Uh, does anybody have any questions about the editorial group or the blog? Okay. Um, so I will hand it off to the Public Health Conference Steering Committee. Hi, Laura. Or were you able to chime in? Muted. Oh, there you go. I'm unmuted. Sorry, it seems that I was unmuted out of my control. So everyone can hear me okay now? I'm going to hope everyone yep. can hear me. It appears that, okay, <laughs> it looks like I am. So, hi, my name is Laura McQuillan, and I am the early career representative on um, the student and early career committee with CPHA. Um, I also am currently the student and early career representative on the Public Health Conference Steering Committee for Public Health 2019, taking place in Ottawa at the end of April. Um, first, I just want to comment on the role of having an early career representative on the team. Um, I found that after completing my Master's of Public Health from the University of Victoria in 2015, when you're part of um, a public health program, you're really integrated into the population and public health community. Um, a lot easier to access resources, interact with leaders and stakeholders in the community. But as Monty mentioned, public health is a vast area to be a part of professionally. And it's really common, I think, for public health professionals to be integrated into other health disciplines. Um, 
as the public health perspective on those committees or groups or places of work. And it can feel a little bit isolating, I think, stepping out from school um, in a public health role where you may be one of the sole voices of population and public health and preventative practice. Um, so I found that joining the CPHA was a great way for me to remain connected with public health across Canada. Um, and I highly recommend if you are an early career, um, a recent graduate, whether you have already found, luckily, lucky to find a place in the public health workforce or whether you're still maybe in transition, that it's a really great way to stay connected with public health and it opens a wide range of opportunities, um, many of which Monsi has covered already. So specific to the conference steering committee, this has been a really fantastic experience. Conferences are a pretty integral part of the health community, whether it's in um, prevention or population health, epidemiology, wherever you might fall within health um, and wellness. Conferences are a great way to participate in knowledge exchange, interact with key stakeholders and leaders in the community, um, and be engaged and, and receive top of the line, um, recent publications and research, staying updated from the research community to make sure that if you're on the decision-making side of public health, your actions and decisions are all evidence-informed. So participation in, in conferences is really key to staying up-to-date and current um, on public health practice and prevention. And so this role has um, afforded the opportunity for me to be a part of the steering committee, which is the group that gets together to essentially organize the, the scientific committee um, and the scientific content for public health, the main conference of the CPHA. Um, it's quite a process. It gives you an opportunity not only to witness the immense amount of time that goes into these large um, conferences, but you actually have a voice in the development. So I've had the opportunity in this role to liaise with the different conference partners that participate um, and the key stakeholders that support financially, but then also are key in developing some of the scientific content that takes place at the conference. But also, um, it has afforded the opportunity to be um, integral in developing the student and early career content. Um, so this involves um, identifying sessions of interest for the students and assisting with planning um, the integrated student stream. So in 2019, there will be an integrated student stream identified in the um, program so students in early careers can see what areas might be specific to student and early career development taking place at the conference, but then also evening engagement and networking opportunities. Um, so this allows me to be stay stay connected to the conference, but then also be a voice for the early career and student professionals. And having participated last year, it was a great way to engage with those who attended the workshop, receive feedback, and now look to implement it in the 2019 Public Health Conference. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of the gist of it. I encourage everyone to look, um, to go online. The um, submission dates have closed um, for Public Health for presenting but um, there's definitely opportunity in this role to continue reviewing conference documents, but also just to attend the conference, interact with all the stakeholders, network with the stakeholders there. There is a student pricing rate, so if you are interested in attending the conference, um, I encourage you to look for early bird pricing when it becomes available and um, look next year to get involved in conference planning. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Laura and Venusha as well. Um, now we'll just move on to our CPHA working groups. Um, did someone have a question? So the conference will be at the end of April, and I guess I'm just typing out the exact dates. And it will be held in Ottawa this year. Um, but just Okay, perfect. Um, and in terms of our working groups, uh, so we do have a couple of different options for those that are interested. And essentially what these working groups are is it is a mixture of uh, not only just students, but also 
our policy director, Dr. Frank Welsh, as well as leaders in the field. And um, these are volunteer working groups. So all of the individuals on the group, um, besides Dr. Frank Welsh, um, are volunteers. And they do devote their time in order to develop policy and position statements. So some of the ones that we have currently are the Disruptive Technology Working Group. And this one is unique because it is a complete student group. Um, thus far, and we will only be uh, sending our draft work to uh, the policy director as well as other leaders in the field um, once it has been completed. We have one on diversity, on the ecological determinants of health, on health equity, on our membership, as well as tobacco control. So. Um, it is uh, definitely a great way for you to get involved because it allows you to work with like-minded peers from all across Canada about a topic that you're personally interested in. It also helps you um, get your thoughts and ideas out. For the most part, these working groups begin with a literature review, and then um, we synthesize what we find, and then we present a unique position, um, which would be CPHA's position on the specific topic. So just to give you a little idea of um, what working in a working group is like, um, we do have Maruk with us, and she's a part of the Technology and Public Health Working Group. And I will hand it off to her for her to share her experiences. Hi, everyone. Uh, can you hear me, guys? Um, uh, OK. Um, yep, that's so, perfect. Um, yep. Okay, perfect. So yeah, thank you so much uh, um, for having me. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, so uh, my name is Maruk, and I am actually a Master of Public Health, and I actually just finished my uh, degree just uh, like a couple of days ago. Um, so yeah, this um, Technology and Public Health Working Group. Um, so we're basically a group of seven students, um, and what, what the purpose of this uh, working group is to write a paper and to investigate the impact of disruptive technologies on specific sectors of public health practice. So um, these uh, specific sectors are like population health surveillance, health promotion, knowledge, dissem knowledge dissemination, and environmental health, and epidemiology. And so some of the major, um, you know, we as a group, we got together and we sort of brainstormed what are some of the major like disruptive technologies. And we came up with artificial intelligence, big data an analytics, um, like data mining, and push notification, screening and diagnostic tools, um, nanotechnology, genomics, and re robotics. And um, yeah, the, it's been a really great experience. Uh, the t average um, a, a level of equipment is just about a, a few hours a week. And we, we uh, usually um, communicate via, via a, a teleconference every, uh, every few weeks. And um, overall, I think uh, it's definitely like, um, Overall, it's, it really helps to, um, you know, strengthen your teamwork skills, especially considering there are a lot of projects uh, that you guys will collaborate on will be, um, you'll collaborate on virtually. It also really strengthens your research and writing skills, which are basically the key corners, like key skills that you definitely need for public health. And um, in, in addition to the CPHA uh, website, I would definitely um, also recommend uh, you guys to uh, also, uh, look at uh, phspot.ca. So that's how I, so there are actually two ways I heard of this opportunity. I heard of it through this website. I also, our professional de development officer, uh, she also emailed all students um, about this uh, about this unique opportunity. And so, um, yeah, definitely. Uh, I would definitely say that um, definitely uh, you'd be in, uh, uh, subscribe to the CPHA website and this website too for, um, for opportunities like that to get involved. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, um, I, I'll be happy to answer them or um, during the question period. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Maruk. Um, that's great. And um, we will be having a uh, Q&A question just very shortly. I'm just about to finish. Um, one of the other opportunities, and you all are you all are here, so we do have a webinar series. Um, and I do highly encourage you to read through all of the different topics. And um, please do join whenever you can. Uh, we created these just for your interest. Um, and we hope that they're helpful. If you ever do have any feedback on the webinar series, please do let us know so that we can improve them. And if you are ever interested in working on helping design these webinars, again, please do email us. Um, we can definitely get you involved. And I think that um, that is definitely a great opportunity for uh, everyone to take a part take part in. 
So um, before we move on, I just wanted to actually um, figure out um, how many of you are currently PHA members versus not and where you are in your study. So we do have a poll set up. Um, so if you are able to fill that out, that would be great. Give you guys a couple of minutes. All right, so it does seem like most people have put in their answers. So we do have a wide variety, um, especially in terms of your educational background. So we do have a couple of undergraduate students, which I think is great. I got involved uh, with CPHA when I was an undergrad, and I'm, I'm still here, and I love it. So uh, we can definitely talk about ways for you to get involved as an undergraduate student. I do see we do have a couple of MPH candidates as well. And I will briefly talk about our practicum placement opportunities. But whenever we do have an opportunity, we do send it out to all of our members. So keep an eye out for that. Our practicum placements are based in Ottawa. So sometimes I understand that can be um, a hindrance for a couple of students. Um, but if you are based there, I highly encourage you to do a practicum with CPHA because you not only get a chance to work with our um, policy director and design policy and position statements, but you also get a feel for uh, how a nonprofit organization works, which is always great. I do see we have a graduate student in another discipline besides MPH. Um, if I may ask, um, uh, I'm, I'm assuming it, it is like a, perhaps like a healthcare related field. Um, but in that case, we do also have a lot of different opportunities for you to get involved, um, as we've already talked about. And if you do have any specific questions about how your education can help you uh, with uh, getting involved, then please do let us know. Um, and lastly, I do see we have a couple of MPH grads. Uh, congrats, Maruk, by the way. You said you just finished your MPH. That's amazing. Um, would love to hear about it. Um, but that's, that's also great. And I guess if you're now transitioning to the early career side of things, I'm sure Laura would be more than happy to help guide you uh, in the field and provide you with some advice. Um, so I also see we have like a 50-50 in terms of whether or not um, we, have, we have a couple of CPHG members on the call, a couple of uh, members that are, that are not, um, or a couple of individuals that are not still members of CPHG yet. So I just wanted to, um, go go over uh, why you know you guys should consider becoming a member. I understand that it is a bit challenging uh, when any type of membership has a price tag associated to it, but the way I like to think about the rate is it's essentially just maybe coffee for three months. So if you're able to set aside some of that cash, it's definitely a great way for you to get involved in public health. It um, gives you a very nice overview of what public health is like in Canada, and it gives you an opportunity to actually work on items. Um, and I, I, I will speak to my experience with CPHA for just a minute at the end of this, but it's just to show you that you can start anywhere and um, you can reach to such great heights. And honestly, for me, that was all just because of CPHA. Um, there are a couple of uh, benefits, too, uh, in order to joining CPHA. We already talked about the journal. We talked about the career development webinars. We talked about the different leadership roles and the networking. Um, but we do also have discounts for the annual conference, as Laura was mentioning. And we get the subscription to the journal. And you would be able to publish your work at the student blog at any time. And there's no limit to the number of pieces you can submit. So it's a great way to get your work out there, to meet other professionals, and also to be able to learn more about public health. Um, and finally, um, this is kind of where I tell you a little bit about my story. So like I said, I joined CPHA when I was a second year undergraduate student at Mac. And I was extremely interested in public health. And one of my mentors, Dr. Fran Scott, nominated me to be a member of CPHA and to become the student director. And since then, uh, I've been able to speak at different universities about CPHA. I've gone all the way to Melbourne to present um, at the World Congress. And I was the youngest student ever to be speaking at a world leadership dialogue. And none of that would have been possible had I not become a part of CPHA. It has truly helped me um, connect to other like-minded individuals 
foster a public health community and also be able to uh, represent Canada internationally. And I think that that's something that's very valuable. So I highly encourage you to consider joining our organization. And I'm willing to work with whatever your education background is, whatever your time commitment is, and try to find a position or a role for you to get involved. Because I do really believe that um, students do have the next, you know, big ideas in public health, and it is a great way to start. And CPHA would definitely be a good way to start thinking about those different ideas and being able to apply them. Um, so I'll hand it over to Emma. I know we went a little bit over time, so I hope we have enough time for questions and answers. Thanks, Monty. Um, I think there was actually just one more slide quickly on practicum placements. You mentioned it a little bit throughout the presentation. Um, I don't know if you want to say anything more, but uh, for those who are current students who have a practicum requirement, we do take on practicum students each term. And um, like Monty said, we will send out notices uh, with plenty of time to get your application in. And uh, the last two webinars were held on this topic, so if you didn't have a chance to join those webinars, uh, I can send you the slides or the recording. Okay, so um, questions for any of our speakers about any of the volunteer opportunities. Now is your opportunity. Please don't be shy and go ahead and type them. While you're thinking of your questions, I can just say a little bit more, uh, or and maybe Laura wants to add more about um, how the conference has evolved recently. Um, starting in 2017, we held, in addition to the conference, we held concurrent forums, which are two-day conferences on a specific topic. In 2017, they were held on tobacco control and immunization. And for 20, uh, sorry, that was in 2018. And in 2019, it's looking like we'll be holding three, one on cannabis and one on healthy parks, healthy people. Actually, sorry, we're, we were originally going to hold three, but then based on submissions, it looks like we'll just be holding those two. So they're entirely driven by abstract submissions, and we didn't get enough to go ahead with a third topic. Uh, so uh, those those are also happening in Ottawa conjointly with Public Health 2019. Okay, so I see that um, some, yes, this presentation is being recorded and we'll post the recording on YouTube in three months' time, um, but I'll share it right away with everyone who's registered as a benefit to members. No problem. Any other questions? And something else that I'll be posting in the chat box just shortly is um, a volunteer sign-up list. So if any of these opportunities did interest you and you wanted to learn more about them and be added to our mailing list, that's definitely uh, something that uh, you guys can do. So I'm just going to be pasting that link in the chat box and let me know if you have any problems accessing it. Great. Yeah, and okay, one other thing that um, I wanted to mention, having listened through the presentation, Monty talked about CPHA position statements and mentioned that practicum students are often involved in writing those, which is true. Um, I just wanted to add that we do have a very formal process for the position statements. So um, each year at the conference, we hold a policy forum, so that's an opportunity to voice ideas for new position statements to take off, um, that could be undertaken. Um, and we have a public policy committee um, that reviews all of the topics and makes decisions based on our capacity and workload. And then they thoroughly review any work that's been completed and provide guidance and direction as well. And then uh, that will also then be sent to the board of directors we we'll have the opportunity to review and provide further direction. And then we open it up to members. We have a member consultation. This is a new process that we implemented over the past year or two. Um, so all members have the opportunity to see a draft position statement and provide comments. 
uh, and that will further refine the statement, which then goes back to the Public Policy Committee for final review and approval, and then back to the Board of Directors. So it's a fairly lengthy uh, process that's quite structured. So um, yes, practicum students are involved, but I just wanted to clarify uh, the full process. Okay, so I see that Monica has asked a question about the CPHA Ambassador Program. Yes, unfortunately, we didn't have any one, uh, any current CPHA Ambassadors to speak to that. Uh, segment, but um, Monty, perhaps you would like to talk about about that, and then um, we can take a we can handle a couple of questions at a time. So there's another, yeah, there's a couple of questions about working groups, um, and I'll, uh, mm -hmm. we heard a little bit about the technology working group, but all working groups are always taking new members, but they're not always active. So right now. Um, I would say the technology working group is probably the most active. The health equity working group will be picking up again in the new year. Um, but if any of the working groups interest you or if you'd like more information on any of them, don't hesitate to be in touch. So Mopsi, over to you to talk about the ambassador program. Thank you so much, Emma. Um, so in terms of the ambassador program, essentially you are the liaison for your particular university or school um, to CPHA. So what your position would entail is essentially giving a presentation about CPHA, which is very similar to the presentation that you guys just got. It's just letting students know the value of being a CPHA member and how they can get involved. Um, other duties of the CPHA ambassador also include um, talking to students um, within their school and, and or university that are a part of um, CPHA and how we can be better helping them, um, any feedback you have for the organization. So I would say that the time commitment might be a little heavy during the week of the presentation, but otherwise um, I would say that it is a job that you might give maybe two presentations a term. So one in the winter term and then one um, perhaps in the fall term when everyone comes back. So that, that would, does that answer your question? I don't really have an hour commitment, but I would say that on the heavy week, it would probably be three hours per se, but otherwise it's like maybe just three hours a month when you're not giving a presentation. Perfect. And if, if that does interest you, please do email us. Uh, for anything that interests you, just email us or let us know now and I can um, connect you with our student ambassador lead who will send you the details for the sign up as well as the presentation. Yeah, thanks, Monty. Great. We have a follow-up question about the ambassador program. Uh, it's an interesting question since a lot of the, um, well, some programs like UVix MPH program is online distance. So would the ambassador program work for, um, in that case, or do you have any ideas? Yeah, um, that's a, an excellent question. So it honestly just depends on what type of software you have access to. If you do have access to a software such as this one, um, and or uh, even, even through Skype, for example, you are able to um, do like a screen share kind of uh, functionality. So if any of those uh, functions are something that you have access to and, and you would be interested in giving that presentation, we can definitely modify the presentation to fit your needs. Um, but it would just be a matter of how many students, I guess, could attend that particular time slot and that presentation, as well as uh, if you have the access to the technology. So we can definitely work with you to make it a reality. If I can add to that as well, it's Laura here. Kate, I actually am also a graduate of the UVic MPH distance program. And there are the opportunities, um, perhaps, at the beginning of the year, I know they do a welcome week where it's the MPH cohorts, but as well it includes the undergraduate, um, I think it's the health services undergraduate uh, bachelor of science program at the uh, at UVic as well. Like that could be an opportunity. Um, I'm sure they'd be flexible with allowing somebody to speak and provide maybe a 30, 30 to 60 minute presentation about the CPHA. Um, or even when you're attending the spring on campus course. Um, there's lots of programming. So I know the UVic, um, Joan Gilliatt, I believe is her name still, as well as Carmel are, are very accessible for students. And that might be an interesting link that you can make to present. 
at the in-person opportunity. Okay, thanks for that, Laura. Any other questions? What I've heard is um, it, it's great. I think the students have taken on so much, and uh, I, I wish we had a similar model to the student ambassador program for regular members in, in the workforce, because it's a really great way to share out more about what we do and get the, the word out there. 